Now, I think we're going to try and go to the co-leader of the Māori Party, John Tamahiri, Tamaki Makoto, of course. John, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Not a bit noisy there. Yeah, yeah, cool. Go can on. you hear me? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, sure, I can hear you. Oh, good. OK, listen, tell us about how you think you're going to start with. You're behind Penny Hinare by about 90-odd uh, votes, it looks, at this stage. Pretty close, only about 5% in. What's your feeling? Well, it's early days, and, um, you know, uh, I've rang Penny, and, um, and uh, I haven't rang Marama yet, but um, the, all three candidates in the seat are good people, and um, so, so our people will make the decision. Uh, but I'm reasonably confident um, we've got a surge on, you know, we had some momentum. <laughs> Well, so well, we'll talk, me, plays out in the next hour. talk me through the seat and how it works. Is are, are there some areas that favour you a bit more than others that you're waiting on? I mean, have, have you got a, any hunches? No, if you can't win the south, um, look, this 25% of the Māori population of the whole of the North Island live in Tamaki Makaurau. If you can't win south of them, where the biggest population is, you've got a few problems. I'll do very well in the west, but. Um, the west, the east, central, uh, all, all, all pan out. So if you can't bring in those big South Auckland booms, uh, we'll have a problem tonight. <laughs> but you're hanging in there. You're still remaining positive. Oh, hey, it's never over till the uh, fat lady sings, as they say. But, um, you know, you're not supposed to say that anymore, don't you? But anyway, <laughs> look, the, um, the point is, uh, the point is our... You know, our people are out there, you know, we've uh, lifted their spirit and their sense of themselves. And so we'll just see how it goes. It was our, it was our campaign uh, that asked them to believe in themselves. And we've gone out there to have a go and we'll, we'll just see um, how the numbers crunch what, in the are next 35, 45 minutes. Are you talking to others around the country? Obviously, uh, Rawiri Waititi looks to be doing quite well in Wairiki. Again, a similar situation to you, about 5% of the vote, 6% of the vote in about a hundred behind uh, Tamati Coffee. Uh, is that a chance, still a chance in your mind? Oh, I think there are chances in, uh, in Wairiki as well as the Taihauru. But it's so early numbers, um, it's just too early to um, make a call on these things. And so, you know, um, like all people, we've got our um, rejoicing, celebratory. Um, speech and you've got your yeah, uh, next time we will be lucky but look that, that's the way this works it's marvellous hey, how our democracy runs out you just watch the numbers coming in we always knew that there was going to be a red tsunami the, the, but we put seven of our waka up they are forged that, that, that weight and we'll just see whether they ride it out or not John it does seem as though there has been a renaissance of sorts for the Maori party that you have seemed to have built something back up again and that you are looking to the future and that there is some momentum even if you don't get across the line tonight it feels like something is happening there oh no doubt um, we will post better votes across all seven seats we only went for the candidate vote um, and uh, that was the, that was the right thing to do and um, our, our, people, our people are good people and um, they're awakening to their money their capacity and their belief in themselves and that's, that's the kaupapa that we've driven on which is to believe in our people, believe in ourselves and don't bow your head. You know, we'll, we'll get out of welfare and we'll get out of prison, we'll get out of all those things. So, uh, but it'll only be us through Te Pāti Māori that will make those changes. Kia ora, John. Thank you very much. Look forward to perhaps talking to you a bit later on in the evening. That is John Tamahiri there, who is uh, running in Tamaki Makoto, co-leader of the Māori Party. He's behind at the moment, but only by about 100 votes uh, to Penny Hinare. So that's going to be one to watch throughout the night. And we're just refreshing the website at the moment. There's about 7% of the uh, count in, with Labour on about 50.3%, National on about 25.9%. Early days with only 7. Mm. 2% of the vote there, but I wonder what it's like down at National Party headquarters, so let's get down there and talk to our Deputy Political Editor, Craig McCulloch. Early count figures not looking flash for National. Is there anyone there yet, Craig? 
<laughs> Good evening, Lisa. Well, uh, those who are watching may be able to see behind me. People are starting to dribble in, but it is a very muted affair. It is a small venue for a start. Only about 400 odd people will be able to fit in here. But you can see behind me some people arriving, some members of the board. The, the president here, Peter Goodfellow, is here. We're not sure exactly who else from the party will be arriving. Uh, mainly Auckland-based candidates is what we're understanding. Potentially only Paul Goldsmith from the front bench in terms of support for Judith Collins. We know Jerry Brownlee is not going to be here as a deputy. He's down in Christchurch. I think from talking uh, to people, there's a generally a sense of resignation among MPs and candidates and, and supporters even. They have been looking at the polls just like the rest of us and they were not coming in tonight expecting to be this to be a celebratory affair. Uh, they were expecting um, a defeat and just were waiting to see exactly how bad it would be. One of the numbers that was bandied around early in the campaign was 35, that they'd be relatively happy with 35 as a number. Then it kind of shifted down. They started talking about low 30s. Look, if the final number has a two in front of it, as it does right now, that was described to me by someone as disaster territory. It would be a turbulent few weeks ahead of it for the National Party. Thanks, Craig. We'll leave it there for the moment because I believe we've got Calvin Davis waiting to talk to us at Labour headquarters. He's not quite in position yet, so we've got 8% of the vote in at the moment. Labour on 49.8%. And as Craig was just saying there, National's got a two in its numbers at the moment, 26.2. Mm. Judith Collins will be watching that from her hotel room. Yeah, I mean, 8% of the vote, it's starting to come in a bit quicker now. Just kept recapping on Calvin Davis, uh, head of talking to him. He, yeah, he, he is ahead in his seat. I think you can go to him now. Uh, uh, oh, hang on. Is that the sound of Calvin Davis getting to the microphone? Indeed it is. Let's go to the Labour Party headquarters. Calvin Davis joins us now. Uh, how are you feeling about things, um, Mr Davis, with the numbers in? I know it's early days, but they're looking pretty good for Labour. Yeah, kia ora. Well, it is early days, and to be honest, I uh, haven't really had a chance to uh, check them out properly because I've been doing interviews uh, for since I've arrived here. But um, I, I'm told it's looking pretty good for us, but it is early days, and we're not going to count our chickens before they hatch. I'll give you the numbers then, because I know you have been busy. 8%, 8.1% returned at the moment. Labor's on 49.8% and Nationals on 26.1%. Have you had you have a chat to uh, your leader in, in the last little while? No, I haven't had a chance to talk to Jacinda. Sorry, and did you say 39 or 49? 49? 49, 49.8 oh, wow. at okay. the moment. Well, you know, that's, that's looking good, but like I say, there's a long way to go uh, yet, and we won't count our chickens before they hatch. Um, you know, there's a, there's a number of, well, if, with only 8% of the votes counted, there's still a long way to go in the night. Yeah, but what are your, what are your predictions? What are you thinking is going to be the outcome for you? Well, of course, what I uh, hope is uh, is that we get as many votes as possible. It'll be uh, good to be able to govern alone, but um, you know, that's at this stage, it's never happened before, and um, you know, might be wishful thinking. But you know, we've we've got to re remain positive and um, just hope those votes keep coming in, and um, hope that the people out there are, are looking for a strong, steady government that's uh, seen us well through COVID, and uh, and they want more of it. So when you say it would be good to govern alone, if you were in that position, what discussions have you had about bringing people into the fold even if you don't need them? Uh, it's been too early to have those discussions because we haven't yet seen the final result and we have to wait for the final result You must have been working through the scenarios before. though. You must have. Uh, we're not going to talk about um, anything other than the election. Tonight is the night to um, acknowledge and thank all our supporters for the wonderful work that they've done, getting out in the streets and organising. Uh, and they're the people that we really need to acknowledge now. There'll be plenty of time later for, um, for you know, all who, what's going to happen post the election. So if you get your wish and Labour does govern alone, does that mean you'll be the Deputy Prime Minister? Like I say, we're not going to talk about uh, things like that right now. We're just going to focus on, on tonight and seeing uh, how the results fall. I'll ask you that one a bit later in the evening. Thanks for joining us. That is Calvin Davis, who's the current MP for Te Tai Tukuro and obviously the Deputy Leader of Labour there down at Labour Party headquarters. And I think that um, we've got... We're going to uh, check in on Auckland Central yeah. and Chloe Swarbrick, who of course is in a race with Labour's Helen White and Nationals Emma Mello. Chloe, can you hear me all right? It's Corin Dan here. <laughs> Kia ora, Corin, I can. Kia ora. All right, let's talk to your situation through first. You are in a very close race here. 
Uh, Helen White is just we in the are. lead we with about 20%. That that was the case. Yes, <laughs> you're about 100 behind. What's the feeling? Really close case. The feeling is that we left everything out there on the floor. We ran a campaign that we are incredibly proud of. We built a community along the way, which is very staunchly the Green Party co-papa, and we will just continue uh, to see as these results roll in. Because right now, as we always knew, it's anybody's game, and it always was going to come down to turnout. We actually heard uh, from some scrutineers who were there, obviously, watching people voting uh, today, that there were huge lines, and at a few of the polling booths, people actually ran out of particularly the special voting papers. So we were on the line to uh, the Electoral Commission making sure that more and more papers turned up as they were needed. So are you uh, hoping that you may get a late run, that uh, even though Helen White is what, 100 and ahead or so at the moment, that the specials will help you? I mean, we've constantly seen uh, throughout this process that there's been 100 odd votes between the two of the top two candidates. So as we continue to roll through that process, I'm sure we'll continue to see oscillation as different booths come in. Uh, overall, Chloe, uh, it looks pretty good for the Greens at the moment. I mean, 10% of the vote counted. Let's not get too carried away, but that's been pretty solidly there in that uh, 8%. Can't, can't take anything for granted. Can't take well, you must for granted. be feeling you must be feeling positive. Not here to talk about we have campaigned with everything that we have got, so we are proud of ourselves as far as that goes. I'm incredibly proud uh, of the whanau around me that I'm sure you can hear. Uh, and look, uh, we're in a totally different position to where I was and where I felt when I was looking down the barrel of this camera in 2017. So, hey, stoked with the campaign that we've run and we'll just keep watching those results roll in. How difficult has it been given the, I guess, the wave of support we're seeing for Labour in the these results to campaign on the left when you've got that uh, star factor of Jacinda Ardern. I think you'll also find that for us the real challenge, particularly on the ground across the electorate of Auckland Central, uh, was being the perceived third party candidate uh, with a second lockdown and the challenge of going through uh, trying to do things like ground campaigning, door knocking and otherwise. But hey, across Auckland Central we reached nearly 10,000 people and again, we're incredibly proud of that. Just finally, Chloe, I'll ask you this question. We'll be asking, Lisa and I will be asking this all night. Will you uh, even if Labour made it a majority, would you want to go into some form of, of government with them? I mean, where, where are you thinking on that? I am incredibly proud of the fact that the Greens are a massively democratic movement and I think that you can see that reflected and whenever the Greens do anything right or wrong, wherever we land, our people are always the first ones to express their opinions on it. So look, regardless of whatever happens with the results tonight, we'll be waiting for another two weeks for the outcomes of the referendums and after that as well for the final special votes to roll in to know exactly what we're doing with the formation of this government. Thank you very much uh, for that at the Green Party headquarters. Yes, that's an interesting point. The specials have traditionally tended to help the Greens a little bit. Uh, and boy, it's close there. It's quite close. Yeah, it is. And it, and it keeps flipping. Every time you refresh yes. the page, sometimes there's another person in front with about 23% of the vote returned. We're going to go now down south to our reporter, Timothy Brown, who I understand is raving a student flat in Dunedin somewhere. Timothy, where are you? <laughs> Kia ora Lisa, yeah, I'm coming to you from the heart of Studentville in the Dunedin electorate. This is the asylum. It's a flat that I've uh, commandeered for the evening. The lads here are happy to host me. They've uh, been vote all down and voted earlier in the week. Uh, a big motivator for this group and for many young people I've spoken to in this electorate was the Vote Yes campaign and the cannabis referendum. Yeah, I can see behind you, for those people who are listening to us and not watching, there is a, um, there's a poster in the background which seems to suggest what their position is there. And um, are they keenly watching? Well, do we know how they voted for the, um, for the end of life choice bill? There, there is a mix here. Um, there are a couple who voted yes for the End of Life Choice Act, as well as a couple who didn't vote yes. And that's been mirrored throughout the youth vote as well that I've spoken to. It, it depends to be... Um, aligned with their political party a lot of the way. Um, in this, in this uh, flat, we've got a, a new Conservative voter, there's a top voter, there's a Green voter, there's a National voter. Um, and throughout the electorate, when I've been speaking to young people, as they've been leaning to the right on their political party, so too have their choices on the End of Life Choice Act. Tim, thank you for waiting for us to get to you there. Tim Brown, who is crossing 
from a student flat called the Asylum in Dunedin. Let's go now, though, to Guyon.